On the basis, I think you should call a spade a spade, we've called it um, what it is, um, and that is a modern day slavery. But more importantly than having the right name, it may be very important in actually how we get prosecutions successfully carried out. Because if you lead on your front foot, which is um, trafficking, it's the trafficking event which has to be proved, not the evil of the exploitation. And therefore what we've tried to do in suggesting to the government, who's been wonderfully open in the whole of this process, is to say that we actually um, we, we need to do more than just bring the three acts you currently use together. We need to think what is going to be in the minds of the jury as a case is revealed before them. The term human trafficking isn't really that clear either. If you're a general voter, slavery is something you can understand much more quickly than human trafficking. And it's all credit to the Conservatives and the par all the parties who've been working on this that it's become such a big issue. The problem is though is that there are still bits of the bill which are missing as Frank has said. It's quite clear that the Home Secretary wants to have supply chains in and I think for a number of reasons. First of all she wants the very best bill going and it won't be the very best bill going if in fact we don't have the supply chains in. Secondly as, as you and Isabel hinted it is extraordinary that when Wilberforce started out Slavery was widespread in this country and accepted. Wilberforce had to w raise the nation up to be opposed to what was common practice. Now, as Isabel said, people are appalled by this fact, but it's hidden. And it's never more hidden than in the supply chains. And what we proposed in the committee was that we attach to the Companies Act uh, a, a sub-sub-sub-clause the company's duties to report on human rights to include modern day slavery. And I think, I, I hope we'll win that debate in that I think the Prime Minister has a duty to actually protect uh, company directors from f foolishly or carelessly entering into activities which are as appalling as human slavery. I think also politically that Theresa May hasn't got her way on this is another example of the fights she has with number 10 which to people on the outside those who've been campaigning for these very important changes seem utterly baffling so if you look back at her fight on stop and search she was thwarted by number 10 in that she eventually sort of succeeded in that she was able to introduce voluntary changes for the police but number 10 thought oh this will make the conservatives look as though we're soft on crime whereas actually she was trying to address a huge injustice that many people from the black and minority ethnic communities have been complaining about for a long time again modern slavery it's very difficult to look at this and think well why shouldn't we include mm. this bit about supply chains in the bill but number 10 see it as possibly anti-business and Theresa May is fortunately for her politically on the right side of this argument and number 10 is on the wrong side. Can I Isabel take you up on that because I think it's very important you say number 10 rather than the Prime Minister because the Prime Minister it appears to me travels rather light in actually running the government and I think it's officials thinking this is his mind mm. and the Prime Minister not actually getting round to actually saying, come on, this is not worth the candle. And the choice that he's going to have, because it will be posed in the, in the Commons, we may not carry it in the Commons, it will be carried in the Lords. Now, does the government actually want to share the credit for this bill or do they want it to be a totally coalition bill? And if they do, then they've got to actually just knuckle down and say, the Lords will defeat us, we'll be dragged, kicking and screaming otherwise, shouldn't we actually just concede what's inevitable anyway? And this is a strategic weakness that the government has had on other pieces of legislation as well. I'm thinking about the, the same-sex marriage bill where it ended up actually with Yvette Cooper managing to take mm. a great deal of the credit because it was Labour's support that got that bill through, even though it was David Cameron's personal commitment. I think if you're a Prime Minister or a Minister who's committed to a bill, you should want to take the credit for that because you go into government to change things. Well, I think as Frank says, it looks like it's going to be a cross-party win rather than a Conservative victory, which is a shame because it's being introduced by a Conservative government, by a Conservative Home Secretary, but you've got battles within the Conservatives over the detail of the policy.